So today I'm talking with Garen Phillips. We're going to do a quick session for him. Uh, this is actually going to be my standard methodology. I wanted you guys all to be able to see this. Um, we're recording this live and we'll be publishing this to YouTube later, depending upon how Garen and I feel once the session is done. Uh, and Garen, you and I are going to be focusing today on this issue you brought to me of kind of holding yourself back, not letting yourself succeed, right? Yeah. Got a lot of skills, a lot of talents. You've done a lot of things to work on yourself, but uh, you're kind of in a pattern of self-sabotage, holding yourself back. Is that right? Yep. Excellent. You've done things like CBT, NLP, that kind of stuff before, and it's just not working for you these days, right? Yeah, I've done a lot more than that too. <laughs> yeah, I've done a lot more than that too. Not sure what you're, what you're not sure what you're comfortable sharing here, but you've experimented with a lot of different things to try and get the changes you want, just not getting where you need to, and that's okay because it can actually be kind of difficult to get to that level from your uh, from your conscious mind, right? Got that uh, subconscious, uh, the barrier between the conscious and subconscious called the critical factor that makes it really hard to see through that stuff. But yeah. uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to get you into hypnosis, which is just a practice of getting you really relaxed, really focused, sort of suspending judgment for a while so you can get back to that unconscious mind. And we can just start asking the question of like, what problem is your mind trying to solve by screwing with, with, with you in this way and holding you back, right? Not letting you have that life you know you can live. Right? All right. Cool. Any questions for me before we begin? Uh, no, not that I can think of. Okay. Well, in that case, are you ready to be hypnotized, my friend? Yeah, let's do it. Excellent. And are you willing to be hypnotized by me? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Just making sure. I mean, you're here on your bed, so you get to make the choice. Go ahead and start with your eyes open for me. Go ahead and uh, do me a favor. Roll them up like you're kind of looking through your forehead. Then just take a nice deep breath and let it go. Good. One more time. Just take a nice deep breath and let it go. Keep your eyes up. Good. This time I want you to take a nice deep breath and hold it for me. For a count of three, two, one. Just let your eyes close as you let it go with a sigh. And just feel that wave of relaxation pass all throughout your mind and all throughout your body as you begin that very familiar process of relaxing and letting go. Because today, Karen, there's really nothing that you need to do. You don't even need to consciously listen to the sound of my voice. You just get to relax. Allow me to lead you deep inside your unconscious mind and trust that my voice will go with you. But to begin with, what I want you to do is just put all of your focus and attention on the tiny little muscles in and around your eyelids. I want you to take all away all the stress and strain and worry of the day out of your eyelids. Make them loose and limp, totally and completely relaxed to where they feel heavy, almost like they're glued shut, like they're almost too heavy to open. And when you know that you have them so loose, so them so completely and totally relaxed that you couldn't possibly open them without putting tension back in and just give them a quick test so that I know. That's right. Stop testing and just allow yourself to relax even more. That's right. Just allow that wave of relaxation to pass all throughout your mind and all throughout your body. And as we work together today, Garen, you can just let every word I say take you deeper and deeper inside your unconscious mind. You can let every breath you take just relax you more and more. Now in a moment, Garen, I'm gonna ask you to open and close your eyes. And as you open and close your eyes, I want you to go twice as deep and become twice as relaxed. So just open and close twice as deep, twice as relaxed. That's right. Just allowing that relaxation to pass through all your body, getting yourself nice and comfortable feeling every muscle in your body become loose and limp and totally relaxed. In a moment, Garen, I'm going to ask you to open and close your eyes again. And this time I want you to go 10 times deeper and become 10 times as relaxed. So just open and close 10 times deeper, 10 times more relaxed, allowing your mind to let go, to experience once again, that drifty, drowsy, dreamy space of effortless relaxation. And one last time, I'm going to ask you to open and close your eyes, Garen, and this time all the way down. Relax completely, just like I'll completely and close all the way down. That's right. Allowing your mind to flow down. 
toward that place of quietness and calm awareness, a place that almost seems to give off signals that direct awareness down towards it, into it, more and more completely, a place of effortless relaxation and letting go and allowing events to occur in their own time and in their own way. That's right. Your conscious mind can enjoy that feeling of relaxation, can enjoy that drifting down into that place of quiet calmness and effortless awareness of so many different things, while your unconscious mind, the back of your mind, can continue to hear and understand, can continue to respond to the things I might say without the need for you to do anything at all. It's so much easier simply to relax and allow events to occur in their own time and in their own way. Learning once again that feeling of letting go, of allowing your unconscious mind to assume more and more responsibility for guiding and directing awareness as you continue to explore your own ability and capacity to learn as you relax and enter into that trance more and more completely, more and more comfortably, more and more effortlessly than before. That's right. And Garen, as you lay there nice and relaxed, every muscle in your body loose and limp, all the stress and strain and worry of the day gone, you can continue to allow every word I say to take you deeper and deeper inside. You can allow every breath you take to simply continue to relax you more and more. Because you know, Garen, that I'm an incredibly talented and incredibly powerful hypnotist, and I could probably hypnotize you in hundreds of ways. Impossible to resist. I could probably just say a few words, a short phrase, and you'd be instantly, effortlessly, automatically hypnotized, taken this deep inside and deeper still. Because, Garen, there's a part of your mind that already knows what it's like to drift in trance. Of all the wonderful things you'll find when you're there. All the benefits you can gain by going deep inside your unconscious mind where all the answers to your questions lie. So, while we work together, Garen, whenever I say the phrase, sleep now, I just want you to instantly, effortlessly, automatically become completely hypnotized. To drop deep into your trance. Faster, easier, better, each and every time as deep as you can go, as deep as you've ever been, and deeper still. All I need to do is say, sleep now. And boom, that part of your mind that already knows what it's like to drift in trance, that already loves that drifty, drowsy, dreaming space of effortless relaxation, effortless awareness of so many different things, will take you right there, faster, easier, and better each and every time. Even if you were wide awake, and I said, sleep now. It would take you right here, right where you need to be to do the deep and important work we're here to do today. And well, Garen, if you're already deeply hypnotized like you are right now, that part of your mind will simply take you deeper still every time I say the phrase, sleep now. So just allow yourself to drift down as far down as you can possibly go as you just sleep now. That's right. Enjoying that feeling of relaxation and letting go. Now in a moment, Garen, you and I are gonna do a quick little exercise. I'm going to ask you to say the alphabet out loud, backwards, slowly, beginning with the letter Z. And I want you to imagine each letter in your mind as you say it. But with each letter you say, I want you to make them smaller and darker. I want you to make them harder to see, to fade away. So by the time you reach the letter X or even before, the letters are going to be gone from your mind, gone from your body, gone completely. Now you can have them back later, of course, when we're done, even better than before. But for now, simply begin saying the alphabet out loud, backwards, slowly, now. Z. Smaller, darker. Y. Harder to see, fading away. X. Gone from your mind. Gone from your awareness, gone completely. And as the letters fade away, your conscious mind fades with it. 
Letting go of all conscious thought, your unconscious mind waking up, taking control, directing you down deep inside. Every word I say, taking you deeper and deeper. Every breath you take, relaxing you more and more. And as you relax more and more, your mind will automatically move towards those thoughts, ideas, images that clarify most clearly for you. The very things you know and do that seem to get in the way. Because Garen, you see, awareness migrates towards things that need attention. In the same way that animals migrate automatically. Without thinking or trying, they seem to know when to go and where and what to do to take care of themselves. An inner voice and inner awareness that moves the herds of animals from one place to another. Makes them restless, you know, something not right. That draws their attention to that uncomfortable feeling and sets them in motion. And they move. Hundreds of miles, thousands of miles. Taking care of their young, taking care of themselves and... Everyone thinks that no one really knows exactly how it feels to be an otter or a whale or a, or a butterfly that suddenly knows the time is right for a change, that suddenly knows the exact change needed. But they do know, and so do you. Just like you know when you're uncomfortable, we need something to eat so we can relax and imagine how it might be to gradually or suddenly feel that feeling. That inner awareness, that restless recognition, that something needs to change and needs to change now. And we can imagine how it feels to have actions flow from those feelings, responding effortlessly, automatically to that inner awareness, that inner knowing that tells us what to do and when and how to do it. We can trust that feeling, comfortably aware of ourselves, our inner guide that knows what is good for us and what is a mistake. And everything becomes easier. Though no one ever imagined that traveling a thousand miles is easy, but the decision to go takes no effort at all. A decision, a knowing. That is a part of each being that guides and directs automatically towards those things needed. A migration of thought, of awareness, that presents memories, ideas, understandings for you to use, for you. Even as you relax, your unconscious mind automatically provides that awareness that you can use later on or right now. Because Gary, you brought an interesting problem to me today. You're a man on a mission. You're a man who's already created a successful business for himself, who's already got reach and fame, has become successful as a trader in so many different ways, and yet you're holding yourself back not really allowing yourself to enjoy the success that you've had, undermining and sabotaging yourself, not allowing yourself to do the things you need to do to sustain and grow the business, the world that you're creating. Now your unconscious mind, Karen, is doing this for you for a reason. It's honestly trying to help you out in some way, trying to solve a problem of some kind. And so today we're simply gonna ask your unconscious mind to help us out a bit more to help us understand the problem it's trying to solve by holding you back in this way, not allowing you live that life of success you know that you can't have. Would that be okay? Yeah. Then we'll simply ask your unconscious mind to show us a few examples in your life of this problem that it's trying to solve, a few moments, a few memories that are going to clarify for us most clearly why it's holding you back, not allowing you to live that successful life you know you can have, why it undermines and sabotages you. And so we'll begin by counting back from five to one. On the count of five, your unconscious mind will easily, effortlessly, automatically choose that first example, that first moment, that first memory that's going to clarify for us so clearly why it holds you back, doesn't allow you to succeed. On the count of four, just let it lead you through time. Let it lead you back, let it become younger, smaller, lighter, move back to that day that your unconscious mind has chosen for you. On the count of three, it comes into view. You know which one it is. You know why we're there. You know exactly what lesson we'll learn. So on the count of two, you can just step on in. Step into that memory, able to see, able to hear, able to feel everything you heard and saw and felt that day. Comfortable, safe in your bed today where nothing can touch you or harm you in any way. And if you need to watch it like as a movie on screen, that's perfectly fine too. But on the count of one, I want you to, be, I want you to make it vivid and real and clear and just be there now 
Is it daytime or nighttime there? Nighttime. Are you inside or outside? Inside. About how old are you? 28. Good. 28 years old inside at night. Describe the scene for me. Tell me what's going on. I was laying in my bed with my now ex fiance and checked my phone to see how much I made for my YouTube. It was the first day I had made 10 grand in a single month, but I was, so I got up to uh, go to my computer and check the, uh, check it on my banking thing. And then I decided to turn on the camera and record it. Uh, it was kind of just the impulse. Like I just felt like I needed to record this moment because it was a contrast of uh, how you would think somebody would be happy and content with their life if they're making 10 grand a month. Yet I was uh, miserable and depressed. Okay. So you're 28 years old, you're inside in bed. It's the first time you've ever made $10,000 a month off of your YouTube. You're checking it on your phone, then you get up, you decide to check it on the computer, and then you decide to turn on the camera and record it. Record the moment because you've, this is a moment that you're supposed to be proud, proud of, supposed to feel good, but you're feeling depressed, right? Yeah, it was terrible. Okay. Tell me more about how you're feeling that moment. Why are you feeling terrible? Kind of a blur from trying to think back exactly what was going on. It was a lot. Okay. I uh, take a deep, do do me a favor. Just take a deep breath. Let it go. Just relax and allow your unconscious mind to tell the story. You don't have to try or anything at all. Your unconscious mind is going to provide us exactly what we need to see. So you're in this moment, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling bad, you're feeling terrible, even though it's a moment of triumph, it's a goal you've been had for quite a while. And tell me what else you're feeling. Tell me what's going on. Uh, I basically let somebody into my life that uh, I shouldn't have. My uh, ex fiance was a pathological liar. I didn't realize this till later, but. Uh, I let her move in and her negative energy and laziness kind of bled off into me. And then we both kind of spiraled into a depression. And then I just kind of lost the uh, lost drive, lost, uh, lost that energy and that dedication to doing something like the passion that you have for your work. Good. Good. So in this moment that should have been a moment of triumph, you're bogged down with all this negativity because this person you invited into your life that you shouldn't have. Would that be true? Yeah. Got it. Got it. Good. Good. So what else are you feeling in this moment? Or is there anything else important you need to share about me about with me about this moment? I guess part of me was fighting really hard trying to make it work between me and her, but uh, it was sacrificial in nature. It wasn't uh, deserved, especially after I found out who she really was. Good, good. Really well done, man. Really well done. You're doing excellent, Garen. So just do me a favor, just go ahead and take a nice deep breath and hold it for me. Good, for a count of three, two, one, let it go with the side. Just feel that wave of relaxation pass all throughout your mind and body and just sleep now, allowing your unconscious mind to drift, letting go of that memory, letting go of that moment, allowing your unconscious mind to look out and find us another moment, another example, another memory. That's gonna help us understand why it holds you back, doesn't let you have the success in your life. Doesn't allow you to have the things you work so hard for doesn't allow you to follow through on your dreams. 
And on the count of five, it's got it. It knows what we need to see. So on the count of four, just let it lead you through time. Older, younger, whichever direction you need to go to reach that day your unconscious mind has found for you. Count of three, it comes into view. You know which one it is. You know why we're there. You know what lesson we learn. So on the count of two, just step on in. Be able to see, hear, feel everything you heard and saw and felt that day. On the count of one, vivid, real, clear, be there now. Is it daytime or nighttime? Well, I'm not getting a specific day, but more of like a okay. time span in my life. Okay, well, just describe it then. Tell me what's going on in your life at that point. Uh, working as a manufacturing engineer for, since I was 15 to 27 before I quit my career to start YouTube. I uh, would always make money and but never have any amount, have, never have anything to show for it. It would always just be instantly blown. Just living paycheck to paycheck. I'd always want to do stuff with my life, but uh, never really had a reason to, or I guess a desire to, enough to change my situation. Okay. So you're this period of your life, you're working for this company, you're a manufacturing engineer, you're making enough money to get by, you're living paycheck to paycheck, but every single penny you make you blow. Always had these big dreams, always had these big thoughts, but you never had the reason or the desire to actually make it real. But yeah, I was I was working for my father, uh, and I was originally very passionate about what I was doing. But by the end of it, I was just miserable and depressed and couldn't stand it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. And how does this all make you feel? This process of being passionate at the beginning, miserable and depressed at the end, living paycheck to paycheck, not doing the things you want to in life? Well, during the high passionate points, it's pretty nice. But uh, afterwards, it's like... A, Feeling of being lost. Okay, what else? Frustration. Okay. A lot of times I feel like I need to do something that doesn't make any logical sense, but I do it anyways, and then it turns out to be a really great decision. Good. So when you follow your instincts, they turn out well. Yes. Yeah. Good, good. Well done, well done. All right, man, you know what to do. Take that deep breath and hold it for me. For the count of three, two, one, let it go with the sign. Just sleep now. Allow your unconscious mind to drift. Let those memories fade of the time when you're a manufacturing engineer and just allow your unconscious mind to drift a little while. Because it's gonna find one more moment in time, one more example clear and concise for us, whatever we need to see. That last piece of the puzzle that's so important that it needs to show us to help us understand why it doesn't allow you to succeed, doesn't allow you to keep the things in your life you've earned. Doesn't allow you to live the life you know you can. And on the count of five, it's got it. So on the count of four, man, just let it lead you through time. Older, younger, whichever direction you gotta go to reach that day that your unconscious mind has chosen for us. Count of three comes into view. So on the count of two, just step on in. Able to see, hear, feel everything. On the count of one, you know what to do. Vivid, real, clear, be there now. Daytime or nighttime? Nighttime. Inside or outside? Inside. How old? Eight months ago. 30. Okay. So 30 years old, eight months ago, inside at night, describe the scene. Tell me what's going on. We're here. We're here. It's in this room. Okay. Are you by yourself? Is anybody with you? Just me. Okay. What's going on? The uh, thing I can't say, because if you're going to put this on YouTube, it'll get demonetized happened. I don't care. 2020, 2020 happened. 
Um, I had just uh, packed up my car and moved down here. Bought this, uh, rented this place out. Rented out my old house. Had a new tenant in it. Was ready to start my new life. I actually shot some videos as I was coming down here. And I was seeing a chick down here and the relationship was like kind of falling apart at the, in the middle of it. And she uh, ghosted me for two weeks. The city was totally shut down. Nobody out anywhere. I, was, I live right downtown, one of the main streets. It was just a ghost town. And as far as it felt, if you've ever studied how psychologically damaging solitary confinement is, I was in a new city knowing no one and had no social interaction for about a month on top of a, a relationship that was falling apart. Okay. So 30 years old, you moved down here to, to Austin, started your life, recorded some content, you're ready to go, you got a new place, found a new plan for your tenant for your old place, and then the Wuhan flu strikes and everything shuts down. And your relationship with the girl you're seeing is going to shit, it's falling apart, and you're stuck in this ghost town. You're stuck in your house, stuck all by yourself. Yep. And what else are you feeling in this moment, man? Describe it to me. Just totally lost and alone. Well, maybe not lost, but yeah, definitely just alone. Okay. What else? Uh, extreme emotional pain. Why? Me and this chick developed a deep emotional connection to one another, but uh, I ended up caring more about the relationship than she did. Okay. Did you move down to Austin to be with her? Partly. I would say maybe 30%. You know, I'd understand not to make the chick your priority, but uh, not going to lie, it was one of the factors, but the year before that, I spent a lot of time traveling to all the major cities in the U.S. to find a place to live. I, I was searching for a place to live before I met this girl, and uh, she just happened to be here, and I did fall in love with the city. It's a very nice city, but she did have a part to play. Good, good. Anything else important about the scene you want to share with me? No. Okay. God, yeah, just extreme loneliness, being alone. Good, good. On well, that case, my friend, take a deep breath. Hold it for that kind of three, two. One, let it go with that side. Just sleep now. Allow your unconscious mind to drift. You've done really well showing us a, very, a few different things, a few vulnerable parts of your life to help us understand why your unconscious mind holds you back and doesn't allow you to succeed. So we're going to do a quick little exercise. I'm just going to say a few things. I want you to repeat them back to me. And then when I'm done, I just want you to easily and naturally finish the sentence. Okay. I want you to say, I am a part of Garen. I'm a part of Garen. That doesn't allow him to succeed. That doesn't allow him to succeed. I am the part of Garen. I'm a part of Garen. That undermines and sabotages him. That undermines and sabotages him. I am the part of Garen. I am a part of Garen. That forces him to sacrifice himself so much for others. Say it again. <laughs> that forces him to sacrifice himself for others. That forces him to sacrifice himself for others. And I do this for Garen because? I do this for Garen because? Finish that sentence. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Finish that sentence. What was it again? I hold Garen back because? 
I hold Garen back because finish that sentence. Just allow your unconscious mind to say whatever it needs to. No need to think, no need to try. Just allow your unconscious mind to answer with whatever it needs to say. I hold Garen back because. I hold Garen back because. I, I don't know. There's. Is it because you want to be accepted? Yeah, probably. All we have to do is ask that part of your mind. And just ask that part of your unconscious mind that's holding you back, not letting you succeed, not letting you have the nice things in life you know you can. Why does it do that for you? It has a purpose. It's trying to solve a problem. Try to, to not be alone or have the feeling of being alone. Okay. And you need to do that for Garen because? Because he was severely alone in his childhood. Good, good. And holding him back means he doesn't be alone. Holding him back allows him to connect because? Holding him back allows him to connect with other people. Yeah. And it does that because? It's, You're holding him back so he's not alone. So tell me how that works. Just having an intimate relationship with somebody makes you feel like you're not alone. Okay. All right. So let me see if I understand this correct. Garen was alone a lot as a child. So he learned in a lot of ways that he has to sacrifice himself in order to be accepted and loved. Would that be true? Definitely. Yeah. Got it. Got it. All right. So tell you what, let's go back to when you were 15, 27 years old and uh, you're a manufacturing engineer. Initially, you love this shit, man. You're fascinated by it. You love the complexity. You love solving problems. You love taking things apart. You're working for your family. Yeah. And there's part of you that thinks that this is how you're going to earn their love and attention, earn their love and affection, right? By showing them finally that you have things to contribute and create. Would that be true? Yeah. Yeah. And so initially it's really exciting because not only do you have that intellectual challenge, but there's also that possibility of making them happy, of being accepted and loved once and for all. But in the end, you're feeling lost. You're feeling frustrated, feeling depressed feeling miserable and alone. And the weird thing is that whenever you do things that don't make sense, they work out really well. But when you do the things that you think should work well, it doesn't work out well at all. And I wonder if you can understand some interesting things that you might not have seen back then. First of all, trying to be what everybody else wants you to be doesn't actually get you affection and attention, does it? Not at all. Not at all, not at all. And so changing yourself to be what other people want you to be means you can't actually be happy, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. Because the other piece of it is that even if you are accepted and loved and adored for the things that you do, because it's what everybody else expects and they're not actually loving and respecting you, are they? They're respecting a fantasy you've built up in their head. Yep. So even then, they're not connecting with you, are they? Nope. No. 
and that can make things that are even enjoyable and interesting pretty miserable, right? If you're doing them for the wrong reasons. Yeah. 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 But I get it, man. If you spent your entire life trying to be somebody else in order to be accepted because you've always been alone, because you crave that connection, it's easy to make that mistake, isn't it? Yeah. It's easy to think that if you're just what you, what everybody else wants, then you're going to be loved and accepted as well, isn't it? Yeah. Most of the yeah. time, though, I would do, I would do what I wanted to do. But I don't know. I was always a pretty independent person. I think it was more of a loss of direction or just not having a clear direction on where I'm going. So kind of just aloof. Mm. But the thing you keep on telling me is that you want to be loved and accepted. Every single theme that you give me is about being alone and not being able to have that connection. Yeah. The tension between that and doing what you want to do. Because look, I get it, man. Back then you were doing what you're supposed to do, what you were told you're supposed to do, right? You're following in your father's footsteps, doing the family business thing. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Yep. And you're finding it's not actually bringing you the joy and comfort and success that you wanted, not getting the, the love and acceptance that you need, right? Yeah. But when you're younger, it's easy to think that if you just do what everybody else tells you to, if you follow in their footsteps, if you follow their path, then you're going to get the things you want and need, right? Yeah. And to be honest, your parents are probably doing the best they could trying to tell you how they succeeded in life. Only you're a different person, right? Oh, yeah. You needed different things, and that's not something they could see and understand. And that's okay. But I wonder if you can forgive yourself for making a mistake when you were younger, thinking that you had to be somebody else, had to be what somebody else wanted you to be in order to be happy. Yeah. Can you accept that forgiveness? Yeah. Well, if you've forgiven yourself, Gary, and accepted that forgiveness, then there's no reason to worry about that ever again, is there? No. No. So just go ahead and take that younger version of yourself and hold them close. Feel them merge inside. Give them all the wisdom and knowledge that you've gained from them until now. Show them how as time passes, you realize that you need to walk your own path through life. That your road to success, that your road to happiness and fulfillment isn't the same one that your parents drove. The one that they walked down. And that's okay. And as he merges inside, you guys become whole once again. Balanced. Fully aligned heart, mind, body, and soul. And you can move forward to when you're 28 years old. You left that manufacturing job. You're doing your own thing on YouTube. And you're really successful. This is the first moment in time where you learned, earned $10,000 a month from your YouTube business. And it should have been a triumph. And yet you're pretty fucking miserable. Because you're there with this girlfriend, this ex-fiance, this woman you were thinking you were going to marry. And your relationship has just spiraled down. You've been sacrificing yourself, giving of yourself so much and just not getting back what you earned. And so this moment in time that should have been a great success is robbed of all its meaning, all its, all its importance, all its satisfaction. And I wonder if you can recognize some very important things. In that moment, you were actually still proud of the accomplishment you made because that was a big step for you, right? Yeah. And you, in fact, wanted to share that with the world because it was a great accomplishment, wasn't it? Well, I haven't shared that video yet, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what you wanted to do, right? You wanted everybody else to be able to celebrate with you. I wanted people to learn that you got to manage a lot of things in your life to actually find joy. It's not just money. Mm. Mm. But part of it was a celebration, right? Because it's a milestone, right? Yeah. And you wanted other people to be able to see that, right? And be happy for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because you know that part is satisfaction. Part of that is being able to share who you are with the world. Right? Yeah, I guess I never really thought of it like that, but yeah. It's like what we were talking about earlier, right? Being successful on YouTube is really about showing the world who you actually are. 
being authentic, being real. Yeah. Yeah. And in that moment, I wonder if they realized that the reason you're miserable is because you weren't actually living authentically. Yeah. Not necessarily in business, but actually in the rest of your life, that you'd let people in your life that were toxic didn't deserve to be there. That you're trying to be something else for them that you weren't. And that you're living two different lives. Would that be true? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so really the mistake that you made was trying to build something that wasn't real with somebody who was toxic, right? And allowing that to distract you from becoming the man you really were. Yeah. Because at the time, you're still experimenting and playing around, right? You'd only left that manufacturing job a year or so ago. Still trying to find your way, still trying to navigate things, still trying to figure out how to create the world that you wanted to live in. Would that be true? Yeah. Yeah. But I get it, man. It's you get distracted by those things you needed for so long that you haven't had. It's easy to be confused by somebody who knows how to manipulate emotions, knows how to get what they want from a man like that. Because when we're needy, when we're desperate, when we're hungry, pretty much anything tastes good. And when yeah. we're needy and desperate, we're vulnerable and we can be taken advantage of, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's okay because it's easy not to recognize that, man. When you get that opportunity to have somebody in your life and you've been wanting that for so very long, it's very easy to accept what comes your way. Yeah. And it's easy to sacrifice a lot of your life in order to get it, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but you know, you know that's a mistake now, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, you learn that that's actually a pretty freaking destructive situation to be in, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's very destructive. Yeah. What can you forgive yourself back then for being distracted, for allowing people and like that into his life? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Good. And can you accept that forgiveness? Yeah. Good. Then just hold them close and feel them merge inside. Gain all the wisdom and knowledge from then till now. Recognizing that you're still experimenting, still finding your way, and you see the world much more clearly now. You understand much more clearly what it is to be loved and appreciated for who you truly are. What it means to live a life where you get as much in return in a relationship. And as he emerges inside, he gains all that wisdom from then till now, all that knowledge from then till now. You guys become whole and balanced once again, healed, fully aligned, heart, mind, body, and soul. And we can move forward to eight months ago as you sat inside your room and everything had come crashing down around your ears. This big dream you'd had, these plans you'd made, moving from up north down to Austin, new house, new tenants, new girlfriend, new endeavors on YouTube and everything else. All that shit just came crashing down around your ears. The relationship was going to shit. And you're stuck inside all by yourself, alone, where you never wanted to be again. Yep. You're feeling lost. You're feeling alone. This extreme loneliness. And I wonder if you can recognize that you may have blamed in some part that loneliness and that frustration on the fact that you'd done what you wanted to do. That you decided to walk your own path and take those risks. Would that be true? Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder if maybe not, maybe you can recognize that even in that space where you were alone at home, you still had connections, didn't you? Still had friends and family you talked to. Even if it wasn't in person. Kind of. Kind of. But it wasn't enough, and I understand. Because you're a man that's always wanted that deeper connection, always wanted to be loved and accepted, always wanted that relationship, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden, that was kind of taken from you because it's falling apart and because. Quarantine and COVID made it so that you couldn't actually be physically together, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I wonder if you can recognize that that relationship fell apart for very good reasons, didn't it? Oh, yeah. In hindsight, I was glad that it didn't work. Yeah. Because looking at her now, you wouldn't really want her in your life, would you? No. 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 But I get it. When you're used to living a life of scarcity, when you're used to thinking, used to thinking that connection and relationships are difficult and they're hard to find. Well, it's easy to think that you have to hold on to whatever you can. Yeah. Yeah. And then something like COVID happens, you can't even have that. It's easy to think that you're fucked, that you're never going to have it again. That you'll always be alone. Yep. Yeah. But you know, that's actually bullshit, right? Yeah. And the moment's always worse than after the fact. Yeah, because since then you've made more friends and more connections, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Set down roots here in Austin. You've made a web of friends, a web of contacts. You've made it easy to actually meet new people in the city, haven't you? Yeah, it was just the opportunity cost. Yeah. Yeah, but here's the thing, man. You didn't actually lose anything, did you? You lost your relationship you don't want. Yeah. You made a move to a city that you actually enjoy better than the place you're in. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't really lose much at all, did you? There were moments of pain, but it wasn't really a loss. And in fact, it, in the end, it was a good thing, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's because change can be painful. And sometimes when you're going through hell, you just got to keep going, don't you? Yeah, the pain gave me a hundred times more than the relationship ever did. Yeah. Yeah. And really, it wasn't the pain. It was the realization that you were enough for yourself all along, right? Yeah. That you deserve more, deserve better. Yep. That you needed more and needed better, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's easy to make that mistake, man, holding on to shit that's not good for you. It's easy to blame yourself for following your dreams when shit goes wrong, right? It's easy to feel like you can't trust yourself or your judgment, right? Yeah. Can you forgive yourself for that? Yeah. And can you accept that forgiveness? Yeah. Okay, just hug it out. Feel the emergent side. Give them all that wisdom and knowledge and until now. Show them that things get better. Show them that you actually have more friends than you ever have while you're down here. Because this is the right place for you at the right time. And as we allow those things to go, as you merge inside and become whole and balanced once again, fully aligned, heart, mind, body, and soul, we can step back and ask that part of you that has always been afraid of being alone, has been sacrificing everything about you to be alone. Does it believe that you deserve to have good people in your life? Yeah. Does it believe that you deserve to have connection? Oh, yeah. Does it believe that you deserve to have success? Yeah. Because here's the thing, Garen, that most people don't realize. There's a lot of people that are afraid of leaving behind the connections that they've had. There's a lot of people that are afraid of leaving behind the past they've lived, thinking that that's the only way that they connect, that the only way they can be loved and accepted. But the interesting thing about pursuing a life of business and success of being an entrepreneur and pursuing these kinds of changes is that we actually bring ourselves in contact with people who are even more amazing. People are also looking to level up their lives. People are also looking to live something amazing and unique. People who are just like us and that they're also creating a world that normal people would never be able to imagine. Oh, yeah. And let's be honest, these people that you've been connecting with before, they couldn't really understand who you were, could they? No, I've uh, crossed this bridge twice and both times my life has exponentially gotten better. Yeah. I'm about to cross it a third time, I think. <laughs> well then, you should probably learn that lesson that so many HR managers, so many business people have learned before. Hire slowly, fire quickly. Yeah. And perhaps that's the biggest lesson that you've come to learn 
is that just any connection is not enough. Just any woman is not enough. That they need to actually show you that they can offer you as much as you have to offer in return. And you've got a lot to give, don't you? Yeah. You've got a lot that you can accomplish in this world, can't you? Yep. And the best thing is, Gary, the most amazing thing is, as you allow yourself to succeed, as you allow yourself to live that amazing life, that naturally is going to draw people who are interested in that life and they're interested in you, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's already happening. Which means... Which means you don't even have to go looking, do you? That shit's just going to come to you. Yeah. So really, the way to make sure that you have the connections you want, the people you want in your life, the women, the friends, the colleagues, the mentors, the family eventually, if that's what you choose, is to simply focus on doing those things in your life that you know you need to do to succeed. Yeah. To move through the world authentically without... Fear, guilt, hesitation, reservation. Just show the world who you are, who you truly are. And trust that as you walk the path and as you make mistakes, each and every single mistake is going to have a lesson. It's like Conor McGregor says, right? He never loses. He wins or he learns. Yeah. Mistakes are what happens when you're pushing yourself on the edge of your abilities. Mistakes are what happens when you're discovering something new. So every mistake gets you closer to what you want. Wouldn't that be true? Yeah. Yeah. So in reality, if you want to live the best life you can, then the best thing you need to do is just get out there and make shit happen. To let yourself do all the things you need to do. Because you know you can survive anything that happens, can't you? You already have. Yep. So let me ask that part of you that's been holding you back for so long. Is it ready and willing and able to help you move forward? Oh, yeah. Is it ready, willing, and able to help you succeed as massively as possible, as soon as possible? It's fucking better. <laughs> That's not the question I asked. Is it ready? <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Is it ready to help you make up for lost time, considering it's been having you in a funk for eight goddamn months now for no reason? Yeah. Yeah. Is it ever going to hold you back again? No. Good. Well, then we'll do a quick little exercise and we'll get you moving on your way. Okay. What I want you to do is just pick a moment in time where you didn't get the results you wanted. Okay. Didn't get what you're looking for. Got a less than positive result. Something big, something small. Doesn't matter. Just picture it clearly in your mind in front of you. And when you can see it, just let me know. Yep. You got it. Good. Now I'm just going to reach into your mind. I'm going to put a frame around that scene so that all the details are captured within the borders of that frame. And beside that frame, there's a dial. So I want you to reach out with your left hand and turn up the dial. And as you do, the colors of that dial become brighter and more intense, brighter and more intense until they all bleed together into a brilliant white light. So that all that's in that frame is a blank white canvas. And we can see that, just put your hand down. Good. Now just reach out with your right hand and I want you to write the powerful, positive lesson you learned from that experience. I want you to see it appear in golden glowing letters on that canvas. The powerful, positive lesson you'll use to make sure that next time things go better. More the way you wanted to, the way it should have gone all along. The powerful, positive lesson you can now see because you know that being your own man, doing your own thing is how you get that connection and happiness. The powerful, positive lesson you can now see so much more clearly because of this understanding you've gained today in hypnosis. And when you can see it, just let me know. Yeah, I got it. Good. So I'm just going to take that off the wall in front of you, move it around behind you, nail it to the wall there, and just boom. Give it a quick push that goes all the way to the back of your mind. I'm going to do this one more time just to practice. Pick another moment in time where you didn't get what you wanted, got that less than positive result. Picture it clearly in your mind in front of you. And then just reach out and put that frame around it so that all the details are captured within the borders of the frame. And then you know what to do. Just reach out with your left hand, turn up that dial. Seeing the colors bleed together into that brilliant white light. So you've got a blank white canvas once again. You see it? Yeah. Good. Just reach out with your right hand and write that powerful positive lesson. The powerful positive lesson you learned from that experience. Seeing it appear in golden glowing letters in that blank white canvas. The powerful positive lesson you'll use to make sure that next time things go better. More the way you wanted to, the way it should have gone all along. If only you'd known then what you know now. If only you'd understood the world then like you do now. 
And when you can see it, just let me know. Yep. Good. So we'll take it off a wall in front of you, move it around behind you, nail it there, and boom. Give it a quick push. It goes all the way to the back of your mind. And now that your unconscious mind has mastered this skill, Garen, just give it all the time it needs over the next few seconds to go through, well, fuck it. Every moment in time where things didn't work out the way you wanted it to. Every moment in time where you got that less than positive result and just allow it to do the same thing. The speed of thought. Picture it clearly, put the frame around it, turn the dial, blank white canvas, powerful, positive lessons every single time. That's right. Extracting all the powerful, positive lessons from all the times when you haven't gotten what you need, all the times when you sacrificed yourself for others, all those times when you didn't listen to yourself, didn't do those crazy ass things you knew you needed to do, the things that didn't make sense, the times you should have trusted your, yourself and your instincts. Learning all those powerful, positive lessons from all those relationships that didn't work because you weren't really being you. All the powerful, positive lessons you'll use to be able to lead that more authentic life, to be yourself, to move through the world without fear, hesitation, guilt, or reservation. And when your unconscious mind is taken all the time it needs for now, no, it can always return, extract more powerful, positive lessons from all the events in life, the ones that happened before, the ones that are going to happen in the days and years to come. Whenever you're ready, just let me know. That's right. Powerful, positive lessons each and every time. And whenever you're ready, just let me know. Yeah. Good. Good. I just want you to turn around in your mind's eye and look behind you into your past. And now all you can see are rows upon rows upon rows of those white canvases in their frames with golden glowing letters on each and every one. Hundreds of them, man. Thousands of them stretching as far as the eye can see. All these powerful, positive lessons you've already learned. And if you chose to look at any one of these events in your life again, well, what you notice is that all you can really see are the powerful, positive lesson that you learned. All those feelings of loneliness, of depression, of shame, of being disconnected, being lost, frustrated. All that crap's just gone, washed away, left behind. Because you know, Garen, that shit just has no value for you anymore, does it? No. Now, the only thing that really matters is the powerful, positive lessons. And that's true, isn't it? Yeah. Because those powerful, positive lessons are the tools you're going to use to build a better life, the life you should have been living all along. Yeah. And so we can just turn around again and face forward in your mind's eye. And in front of you now, you can see a path. And you know that this is your path into the future. And with that part of you that's been holding you back right there by your side, helping you every step of the way, helping you make up for lost time while you can begin to walk that path. Seeing the hours, the days, the weeks pass by seeing yourself move more confidently in the world, more certain, more sure, knowing that you're finding the right path for you, taking action, doing all the things you need to do to care for yourself, mind, body, and soul, all the things you need to do to let go of the baggage of the past, all the things you need to do to build that empire you're creating, to get back on top of the world the way you know you've always been able to. You see yourself able to connect easily and effortlessly with all kinds of people all around you. Establishing healthy fucking boundaries. Keeping toxic people the hell out of your life because nobody's got time for that shit. Forgiving people for being human because everybody makes mistakes and allowing people into your life that truly add value. People who can recognize the amazing things that you've done, the amazing things you're going to do, the path that you're on. People who want to help you succeed in every way possible. People who want to add to your life rather than take from it. Who want to help you become the man you want to be. You see yourself be more comfortable in your own skin because you've recognized that all throughout your life, you've never been alone. That you've always been there for yourself, helping yourself, taking care of yourself every step of the way. And so you have no fear. You know that everything's going to come in its right time, in its right way. All you have to do is follow your instincts to experiment, to try Play around, see what works and see what doesn't. Because every mistake has a lesson of its own and every mistake takes you closer to the goal you want to reach. 
So all you need to do is take action because action creates clarity. Now you come across obstacles in your life as every man does. But each and every time you just reach back to those powerful positive lessons of your past. Each and every time you reach out to your friends and mentors in real life and online, leveraging their powerful positive lessons from all the shit that's gone wrong in their lives. And as a result, every obstacle falls. You go over, under, around, straight fucking through. Because sometimes that's more fun. You learn more powerful, positive lessons each and every time. You become more confident, more capable, stronger, wiser, able to see the road ahead much more clearly. And as a result, everything becomes easier. And then guarantee one day it happens. You step in the shoes of the man you've always known you could become. Sooner than you ever thought possible. Strong, confident, capable, successful. Moving through the life without fear, hesitation, guilt, or reservation. Just doing the shit he knows he needs to do. Following his instincts. Letting them guide him. Knowing that he's learned all these powerful, positive lessons. Knowing that no matter what happens, he can handle it. That every action creates clarity. That every mistake is a step closer to winning. And as a result, he's established a life of massive abundance. <laughs> We're not done yet. Get the fuck back down there. Just... Sleep now. That's right. Just allow yourself to go all the way down to see that life of abundance all around you. Surrounded by friends, family, women who admire and adore you. You want to show that admiration and adoration in every possible way. Knowing you're never alone because there's hundreds and thousands of people on exactly the same journey as you are to find who they are and find their own path in the world. And you can see it clearly now, can't you? All around you. Yeah. It feels amazing, doesn't it? Yeah. And when every single part of you is absolutely convinced that this is who you are, that this man of action and determination is who you are, when every single part of you knows you'll never hold yourself back again in any way, shape, or form, when every single part of you knows that you're becoming an inspiration to all those around you because of all the hard work you've done, all the hard work you're doing today in hypnosis to leave the baggage of the past behind, when every single part of you knows this is now your permanent natural way of being and your permanent natural way of moving through the world. Why don't you just nod your head or tell me, fuck yes. Fuck yes. Good man. But you notice Dana, something interesting standing there in that place of abundance, that place you thought you'd never be. Your path in your future keeps going. Because that's not the end, my friend. That's not the destination. That's just the beginning. Which means you get to create something even better, even more amazing than you ever thought possible. You excited to get started? No, yeah. Well, then I'll bring you back to the waking world by counting up from one to three. Beginning, of course, with one. Because you're the one, Garrett. You're the one that's been there for yourself all along. Trying to help make sure you have those connections that you needed so you never be alone. Helping and protecting yourself every step of the way. But two, you've recognized that the best way to make sure that you have the things in life you want is to be who you are. To stop pretending. To stop being what everybody else expects and just walk your own path because that's the way to have true connection with people who are truly right for you. Knowing that you're never going to hold yourself back. You're going to allow yourself to have the success you deserve to create in the world what you need to create, that unique thing that only you can bring. Knowing this is now your permanent natural way of being, your permanent natural way of moving through the world. And as a result, your success is guaranteed. And three, only when you know this is true for you. Only when you know you'll never hold yourself back ever again. Only when you know you'll allow yourself to succeed as massively as possible, as soon as possible, if not sooner. Then and only then, take a nice deep breath. Feel the energy return to your body. Eyes open, wide awake, feeling fucking amazing. Welcome back. Uh, how do you feel? Need a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> need a coffee? Did I put you to sleep? No, I, need, I feel re really good. <sighs> a bit lighter, a bit clearer. A lot of that, yeah, a lot of that stuff. I I figured out, you know, through shadow work and through journaling. And I did all that stuff mm -hmm. similarly and ran through those processes, but not in a one continuous, like hour long session. Mm -hmm. So it like yeah it puts it all together and you know I'm, I'm eternally grateful for all of the 
pain and suffering that I've been through because I wouldn't be who I am without it. Like right. each, each thing that happens is a lesson and it makes you better. But uh, yeah. It's a little bit different being consciously aware of things and actually integrating that on that unconscious level on the level of belief, right? Because there's still that part of you that believed that you had to keep on being something else in order to be accepted, right? To not be alone. Yeah. Yeah, identifying the feelings is the hardest part, especially for a lot of guys. Is that what you yeah. see? It's hard to connect with the feeling. I think that a lot of guys, men tend to be very rational, very... Oh, yeah. logical object-based things, right? We see problem, fix problem, right? Yeah. But the problem is that our unconscious mind doesn't work in logic and reason. It works in emotion and symbol and metaphor. Yeah. And that's the part of our mind that's actually assigning meaning to the events in our lives. Yep. <laughs> and because of that, it doesn't really respond well to logical reasoning, right? Yeah. You're going to like it. Of my podcast, I literally just said what you just said. Outstanding. Love it. And the problem with that a whole critical factor that I was talking about earlier is that because your unconscious mind will simply not accept anything, it's too far different from what it already believes. We can decide to think whatever the hell we want to. We can have this perfect theoretical frameworks, but if it's so far different from our, what our unconscious mind believes, it's not going to change the way it does business. Yeah. So for example, in your life, like you had this belief that you had to be what everybody else expected in order to be loved and accepted. And that was your biggest, highest core need, right? Yeah. And so you've been sacrificing yourself all along. You've been undermining what you could. You're trying to follow everybody else's path, trying to be what you need for these women in your life and things like that, trying to be what you need for your family in order to get that love and acceptance. And just because you understand that that's what's going on, it's still believed that that was necessary until you get down there and start adjusting that belief down on that level. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it sucks. One of the things that I've kind of identified lately is uh, I'm having a lot of hesitation with making decisions on the direction for my YouTube channel and stuff. And fundamentally the feeling there is uh, accept it. It's like worrying about w what my audience and stuff is going to uh, think or say or do or mm -hmm. you know, the ramifications and all that stuff. It's, and it's, it really doesn't matter. Like you just create what I'm going to create and do it and put it out. And like, yeah. Yeah. The goal should not be other people. Yeah. It's weird. Then it's just weird when your, your job or your goal is equally to help people. <laughs> you have to care on some level, but that having that balance of caring, but not caring too much. Well, what I've found is that, people are going to find you that resonate with you and your approach and your story. Yeah. And those are the people that you can help the most. Yeah. Right. So you don't have to help everyone. You just have to put yourself out there so that you can help the ones that are best helped by you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. How you feel now? I can, I can feel processing going on <laughs> <laughs> you can feel your brain and your heart churning yeah if, if, if processing is a feeling that's that's what it, that's what i'm feeling <laughs> yeah wheels are kind of turning your head figuring out what's going to happen next honestly no honestly i'm just gonna do and not worry about it <laughs> like i'm, I'm i think it's a huge it's trying to anticipate too much it's it's the rational you know, masculine mind trying to constantly organize and yeah, strategize. Uh, but sometimes you just have to tell the strategy part of your brain to shut the hell up and go. Yeah, because the wonderful thing about taking action is that you actually get the answers to the questions you keep on asking yourself. Of like, oh yeah. my God, what happens if I do this? Well, you could just do it and figure it out. Yeah, that's <laughs> that all the time. It's like we get so obsessed with knowledge and I, I call it the uh, the triad of of knowledge. It's it, a one one point is knowledge, the other side is experience, and then the top of the triangle is wisdom. Like you can't, right. you have to go out and take action. You have to do things to really internalize and learn uh, the lessons. Mm -hmm. like you can read as many books as you want on how to play basketball, but you don't have to learn basketball until you pick up and start dribbling. Yeah, it's that internalization process. You can't just have it be a conscious thought, a conscious practice. It has to actually be internalized. 
Yeah. You got to feel it. You got to make it real, right? Got to make it unconscious. Yeah. I liked your visualization uh, with your, your framework stuff. That was, mm -hmm. uh, I always just conceptualized uh, my experiences and practiced gratitude, uh, mm -hmm. emotional rewriting, but never did uh, visualization on gratitude. And really, it's just like letting your, you know, because I don't know what the hell you got in your head. I don't know what the hell's going on in your life. Just let yourself extract what lessons you need to see and just leave yeah. the bullshit behind. Yeah. Right. Have you ever had uh, some really difficult clients that you just didn't click with? Yeah, I've had a couple. I've had a couple. I've had a few clients that uh, straight up couldn't see any memories. They just couldn't go there. Damn. And with that, like a lot of times I just switched that exercise. We're just like, okay, cool. So tell me what's going on. Like, this is a part of you that's doing this thing. Show me why. Tell me why. We were able to get some good results that way. I had one guy who flat out couldn't see anything. And I started to ask him, I was like, oh, let's just go visit your childhood home. He's like, no, you don't understand. I can't remember anything from more than a few years before. Is that had no memory, yeah. not at all, even in hypnosis. And I'm like, okay, so just quick guess, uh, something horrible happened, didn't it? And just like tears started running down. So he's like, all right, let's just work with that. He had been through some shit and he wasn't ready to face it. And that's okay, because we we're able to use that fact to do enough work to let him let stuff go. And afterwards, he's able to remember a lot more over the next weeks and months to come. And he's able to get himself in a better place. Yeah, the, so, uh, yeah, I'm very... Yeah, very similar to mine too. I it, it took me ten years to admit uh, what happened to me verbally, like just to say it out loud it was like ten years. Mm -hmm. um, but the only reason it didn't come up in this this thing is because I've already worked past it and I've already done a lot of work with that uh, specific event to the point where I I, I see it as uh, I'm gra I'm grateful for it mm -hmm. rather than uh, it bothering me. But it's a reoccurring pattern that continues. So. It's interesting how you can identify the root pattern or the root uh, experience, but then it can still repeat and you have oh, to yeah. work with all of them. Well, what you need to do is you just need to identify the pattern and work with the pattern, right? That's kind of what we did today was just play with that, right? Yeah. And a lot of times what will happen with guys who have had, let's just say, rough childhoods like that, where there's been a lot of verbal abuse, physical abuse, neglect of various kinds, right? To where they just can't be... They can't get the love and acceptance that they need. What they'll, what often happens is this idea that they're uh, they're broken in some way or they're undeserving in some way. Mm -hmm. And once that happens, like if you don't feel like you deserve success, you're not yeah. going to let yourself have it. If you don't I feel like you deserve good things, you're not going to let yourself have it. I yeah, I noticed I had some pushback on you uh, with yeah. one thing that you said. What was it? Oh man, we were talking about. Um, I'd have to go back and rewatch it. Yeah. There, there was pushback on something, and I, yep. I noticed that it was uh, that, like trying to say that I don't deserve it. Yeah, basically. That's okay. I've done this shit before. I got you around it, didn't I? Yeah. What's the uh, what's some other techniques like just affirmations? I, I've really I've really never dedicated like a month straight to an affirmation. I've done it maybe like a couple of days. So a lot of things will work with different people, right? Affirmations are a great thing to do. Uh, Scott Adams swears by them. Um, part of the trick with affirmations is, again, it's a conscious mind process. You're essentially trying to program your unconscious mind with what you want in life by saying it over and over again as a practice. Yeah. Like, I am this, I am this, I am this. I'm a fucking athlete, I'm a champion, I'm a champion, I'm a champion, right? And trying to program your mind with that belief. The difficulty again is if it's too far from what you already believe, it doesn't work. Yeah. Right. Uh, same thing with a lot of um, like hypnosis recordings and things like that. If I've got you in hypnosis and even you experience that's here where I was telling you, it's like, oh, you're awesome. And you're like, no, I'm not, right? If you, if the things I'm asking you to do in hypnosis, the suggestions I'm providing you or the guidance I'm providing you is in conflict with something you believe deeply, your unconscious mind is gonna reject it. It's gonna ignore it. It's not gonna take effect. So you can sit down and do all the affirmations in the world you want to. You can sit down and listen to all the success DVDs that you want to. You can sit down and listen to all the success hypnosis that you want to. And it's just not going to work if you don't feel like you deserve the result. Or yeah. if it's in conflict with who, what you truly believe about yourself. So, so what's the route around that when somebody's got a, 
a heavy inset belief that's very contradictory to uh, what they're wanting. Well, that's what we did today, right? We go figure out what that belief is and we unfuck it. Yeah. It's crazy how the mind works. Wish it was oh, it simpler. Wish it, wish it was just like, hey, fucking. This. Oh, no, you don't want that because then anybody could change your mind and anybody could make you who they want you to be, right? That's true. And think of all the crazy ass ideas you've had of who you thought you wanted to be and how bad it would have been if you let yourself do that to yourself, right? This yep. stuff exists for a reason, right? This stuff, our mind works the way it does. It's inconvenient sometimes. It's difficult sometimes. It's a complete pain in the ass sometimes. And there's stuff I'm struggling with that I really wish I could fix for myself, but I've got a block that says that I can't fix myself. So I can't actually allow myself to do it. So I've actually got a session scheduled with a hypnotist on Friday to unfuck stuff that I can't get to on my own. So you're actually aware of it. You're, are you oh, aware yeah. of the actual belief? You just can't. Oh yeah. Huh. I know what it is. I've got a very good idea of where it comes from. I can see it playing out all throughout my life. And because I am consciously aware of it because of that whole uh, critical factor, right? I can't just go back and change myself. And because I'm, because I know all the tricks that I'd use, because I know all the yeah. things I do, right? Yeah. I can't even fool myself because I know what I'm lying to myself. Yeah. Damn. So that's... affirmations don't work for me. Fucking, I can listen to hypnosis stuff and it doesn't really set. It doesn't really click, right? I just don't follow through on the things I need to do. It's such a pain in the ass, but that's okay because I've got clarity on what it is and I just need to get to somebody who can get myself down there and walk me through the process of changing it. So are you, uh, are you comfortable with, you know, putting that out there on your, your YouTube and your social media? And sure. Yeah. So, so what is it? What's your issue? Is it just not getting, there's a part of me that believes that because I have always been different because I've always been on the outside looking in because yep. I've never really fit in that I therefore do not, you know, that the things that normal people have, I don't actually get to have in my life. Yeah. Right. So I can understand how a person could be a YouTube success. A person could be popular. A person could be really creative, but that's other people. I'm different. I can understand how a person could live a successful life, how a person could be loved and adored, how a person could have a great family, but I'm different. And therefore that's not for me. Yeah. Right. All that sort of stuff where like, I can see other people, I can see people become, I can see people become physically fit and have a great diet and exercise routine and be really healthy and happy but I'm different. And therefore that's not for me. So it sounds like an ego, ego thing where your, your ego identifies with your, your uniqueness is like what makes you, you, it's your identity. Sort of. It's much more the fact that I've always been very aware of my, of how different I've been. Yeah. And I've, I've always been very aware of how much I've not fit in, how much I've been, you know, how easier everybody else has it of just fitting in and getting through the world and everything else. Right. Aaron Clary has got that curse of the high IQ book where he talks about people who just, you know, there are a couple standard deviations around the me about the mean and the world is just not meant for them. Yeah. Right. And I've been very aware of that from a very young age, from a yeah. very goddamn young age. And it's not a better than that's the thing. It's not a better than it's not, no. I'm superior. No, it's like, I'm fucking different. This world is not meant for me. And therefore the things that are in the world are not meant for me either, which is stupid. On a logical level, I know that because I'm an intelligent guy, because I'm a creative guy, because I have these talents, I should be able to create whatever life I please because I'm not bound by convention because I'm different. On an intellectual level, I'm aware of that. On the level of belief, of emotion, of behavior, yep, that's not for me. I'm not allowed to have it. That's what normal people have. That's what normal people get to have. That's part of the world, and that's not for me, which drives me fucking insane. Yeah, but, I can relate to that. When I was younger, I used to be like that too. I don't really yeah. know what changed though. I was always kind of a person that just said, fuck it. I'm going to just do, like, I was a very wild person for most of my mm -hmm. life. I still consider myself wild. Um, but yeah, I used to, when I was younger, especially teenage, I was very aware mm -hmm. of how weird and different I was. <sighs> huh. It's interesting. It's interesting. The, the hypnosis thing is almost like a, um, I mean, it's, it's a guided therapy session essentially, but it's through deep relaxation, right? Deep relaxation. And because in hypnosis, we get to 
bridge past that critical factor. So like what is the critical, critical factor exactly? That's the barrier. Critical factor is the barrier between the conscious and the unconscious mind. It's the thing that decides what's true and what's not. Right. And generally our unconscious mind won't allow our conscious mind to perceive things that it thinks are difficult, painful, that it doesn't, that your conscious mind doesn't want to deal with. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And because at one point you said, I don't want to deal with this, even though now you want to, your unconscious mind says, no, 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 you told me back then that you didn't want to deal with this. So I'm not going to show you. Right. <laughs> that's why, that's why typical therapy can take so long because it takes so much time to build rapport and trust to where you can actually open up again about that stuff. Okay. And it takes time to walk kind of that Overton window of this is what you believe and this is where you want to be. So you kind of got to like walk that closer and closer by steps until you can actually make that change. That's why it can take, you know, years of talk therapy to really get the space you want to be. Okay. Right? So but with so hypnosis, essentially what I do get to do is I get to buy about six months of rapport just by getting you in hypnosis because I bypass that barrier. I could ask you whatever the hell I want to, right? It's trust, really. Yeah. It's yeah, trust. Exactly. And it's sales it's psychology. Fact, kind of. Yeah. yeah. It's basically like, okay, we get to bridge past that barrier. All your normal defenses are gone. Right. I yeah. get to ask whatever questions I want and you'll show me what you need to show me in a way that's safe for you so that we can understand. I didn't say, show me why you're fucked up. I said, show me examples of the problem you're trying to solve. Yeah. Right. Just show me an example because all I need are pieces of the puzzle. And once we have pieces of the puzzle, we can figure it out, right? Yeah. And then we get to actually make the change down on that level, which means we get to do a year's worth of work in an hour, right? Because I don't have to, I don't have to gradually move that window. I can just go from here to here because that normal barrier is not there. So, right? so when, when uh, terrible things happen or like that, that pattern repeats in somebody's life, wouldn't it be very beneficial for them to learn? Um, to approach it non-judgmentally or, you know, the, the typical stuff with meditation and uh, spirituality and, you know, being disconnected, like seeing it, observing it for what it is rather than perceiving it and taking it personal and getting all hurt about it. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be beneficial to teach people how to uh, essentially the frame thing where you look at everything for, with gratitude? Sure. sure. Well, the thing is like the frame technique is to number one, remove the emotional content and number two, to extract the lesson. It's not really about gratitude. It's about extracting the lesson, right? And leaving behind yeah. the bullshit, right? The thing is that to do that, you have to be in a space where you can actually connect with that event from a, from a different place, right? I don't know that doing that on a conscious level is as effective right? Because you don't really, it can be hard to connect with. Your conscious mind might simply not allow you to connect with it in that way. And quite frankly, re-experiencing trauma is not necessarily a good thing. No. Right? So forcing people to go back and relive the thing in order to feel again so they can let it go, that's not necessarily going to happen, right? And it has, the, it, it has the risk of reinforcing those negative associations, right? Yeah. Yeah. What I would say is that it's not the events that happen in our lives is the stories that we tell, mm -hmm. right? The important thing isn't the traumatic event that happened is the story that we tell, right? So being able to use whatever process, whether that's hypnosis, whether that's therapy, whether that's psychedelics, whether that's meditation, whether whatever it happens to be, to be able to tell a new story about that in a way that sticks, that gives you new options in life is pretty much universally effective, right? I mean, yeah. that's essentially what we did today is we just went back and told different stories about that stuff that gave your mind a different way to frame the things that have been happening in your life that yeah. allowed you to believe and understand that you actually deserve to have connection and acceptance and that actually allowing yourself to be who you are and succeed at the things you want to create is the way you get to have that in your life, right? Yeah. I think you're really going to enjoy uh, psilocybin. <laughs> uh, very, I'm very all about it once I get the opportunity. Yeah, very, very similar uh, effects happen when you're on psilocybin. It, uh, it, it, it that critical factor mm -hmm. just it goes it away. Disappears in with psilocybin, and you're able to. I can go back to memories that I can't normally go back to. Mm -hmm. Like I can't bring forth 
just because the, the mind for whatever reason doesn't bring them but in, with psilocybin they just come right forward and you can actually be back there now that's very dangerous if you're you're you know had trauma and you're not okay with the trauma but i've as far as i'm aware of i've worked through most of mine um but it allows you well, to reframe it as well too yeah well here's the thing is that psychedelics you know psilocybin lsd all that sort of stuff um even the ketamine and mescaline are actually classed as hypnotics because they have very similar effects on how the brain actually functions in that altered state. They do have that effect of bringing down the wall and allowing the unconscious mind to just vomit up all kinds of stuff for you to see. Yeah. Right. But it's very much a uncontrolled process. Yeah. And you're rolling the dice because you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. The, the <laughs> only reason I do it on a therapy level is because I've done a lot of psilocybin at this point. I've, I've done, I've microdosed sure. for had multiple trips so i can i can i have experience with controlling it but a random person that's never done it you don't want to throw them into that <laughs> right right and and the thing with hypnosis is that we get to get to a very similar space except all i just did was run my mouth for a while to get you in that space and then we get to do a very direct and very controlled exploration of where we want to go because the thing you said about memory is very true like every single thing that's happened in your life is actually perfectly recorded in the back of your head Oh yeah. Whether or not you can recall it is entirely up to whether or not your unconscious mind wants to show it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a very different story. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I've dove into dream work as well lately, mm -hmm. a lot trying to uncover my dreams. You said you read uh, the body keep score. No. Okay. I can't remember no. if I recommended that to you. Um, it, it's a fantastic book when it comes to tra trauma and how the body, the, the body keeps score. It, it remembers everything. Um, there's a certain ther therapy practices. I can't remember what there is, but it's like point therapy for muscles. And I've heard stories of people uh, going through it and they just break down crying and like emotions and memories released. This feels like it's, it's not just the brain, the, the entire the brain and body. body. Everything, yeah. Yeah. And I bet you can feel like tension and release in the body as you go through this process too. You probably feel a little bit looser already because you're just yeah. carrying around less shit. Yeah. That's something I've practiced with awareness lately, meditating and just practicing mm -hmm. body awareness. Like I'll notice when I'm tense and like, why the fuck am I tense? <laughs> mm -hmm. Dude, anything you can do to gain awareness of what's going on inside your head and inside your body is a very good thing. Yeah. It's a very it's, good thing. It, it's entirely what holds you back like there's there's really nothing out there in the world that really holds you back in the world that we live in today it's Except all you. you yeah yeah i've said nobody can kick my ass like i can and it's very true oh yeah <laughs> yeah and a lot of people get pissed off at even saying that sentence though is uh you know the victim mentality people yeah but that's okay they yeah. want to live the life they want to live that's fine i'll help the people who actually want the help i'll help people who really want to do the work in the meantime, I'm going to do my own work and the stuff that I need to do to fix my own life. See, I think that's the mentality that I need to really adapt because uh, all this stuff that's we just talked about, that's mm -hmm. definitely a release. But I, I still feel like there's a barrier of me making decisions and worrying about other people's opinions. It's connected, <laughs> but it's not the same. Yeah, that's it's very much this pattern that you, I'd be willing to bet that because of the events in your childhood that we never really got back that far in your memory. And that's okay. Cause we really get, get an idea of that. Once we started talking about the whys is that you felt you had to be what other people expect in order to be safe and loved and accepted. Well, it was, it was mostly, I had to take up the responsibility of my mother's emotions so that I didn't get attacked. It was a survival right. mechanism. Right, right. Yeah. I'm going to say, yeah, definitely. It's you have to do what person A expects or you may not survive. Yes, exactly. Right? That's that. Which means that, which means that if that's the survival mechanism you put into place very, very young, then throughout your life, you're always going to be, I have to do what other people want or I am at risk of death. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's really the, yeah. The same feeling that I had in this room during the shutdown is the exact same feeling I had when I was uh, a teenager. Um, that's something too with practicing awareness and going doing this stuff. If you upload this to your YouTube channel is pay attention to the feelings you're feeling and then correlate those to the feelings you've felt in the past or in other situations. Yep. And it's almost always the same. Yep. 
Yep, because our mind is an amazing pattern. Ma- it's probably the most amazing, most powerful pattern matching machine on the planet. Oh it's yeah, the human mind. Yeah, the statistic: there's more neurons and synapses than all of the stars and all of the galaxies and all of the universe. It's insane. Yep. It is the most advanced thing that we know of. Yep. Um, Indeed. So, how do you, you know, what would you recommend rewriting? rewriting the word the worrying about other people's opinions for survival what'd you say exactly i said okay you essentially had to be what other people expected in order to survive yeah right but here's the thing we've actually already done a good bit of that work today right because you realized in a lot of ways that the connections you build from that aren't actual connections Mm -hmm. you don't actually create connection they're they're connecting with facsimile with a fantasy yeah so in order to have real real connection to actually be able to you know have real people in your life you have to show them who you truly are yes right and i get that that's going to be uncomfortable and we may need to do a bit more work around that right but i think that as you just start taking action that's going to go away because you recognize that okay Person A, B, and C may reject you because of this new opinion, this new direction you're taking things. Fair enough. Person X, Y, and Z walk through the door because of it. Yeah. I've already I've already kind of learned that lesson internally through my experiences moving here. And mm-hmm. like, just, yeah, it's, it's, op- it's trying to teach people opportunity costs. Like you don't know what the future is going to bring. So right. you might as well but do it's, what it's not. It- yeah, it's not even opportunity cost, right? Because that's saying that you have you have to sacrifice something to get something else, or that there's a cost to being who you are. Yeah, no, there's not. It's not. Yeah, it's not really it. It's really much more of a recognizing that the more you're able to be authentic, the more you're able to move through the world just as who you are, the more easily people can connect to you because they recognize things in you that they have themselves or that they want themselves right? They can resonate with your story. And it's that ability to build a rapport based on actual real connection and shared experience, shared values that creates actual bonds. Yeah. Everything else is bullshit and fake. Yep. And I don't know how I'm going to be able to turn this into a 20 minute video. (laughs) This might have to be a muck. Because it's, it's just, it's so much, there's so much behind this stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cool. Well, hey, any other questions real fast before I let you go? I need to go grab some a bite to eat before my next session, but no, not that I can think of. Um, yeah. I mean, any recommendations to do on my own? Um, so the only things I really recommend that guys do to follow this sort of stuff is number one, just start acting in accordance with the guy you want to be. And that's going to be a lot easier because you cleared out away a bunch of bullshit, right? You got a lot more space to take action. All right. Yeah. So just start doing things that you want to be in accordance with the guy you want to be. Second thing is uh, I'm big on gratitude work. Five things in the morning you're grateful for. The thing I don't that most people don't do is five things at night that you're that you did right that day. Five wins. Yes, that's something I don't do, but I know I should do. <laughs> yep. Right. Well, good time to start, right? Subconsciously, I believe I haven't <laughs> deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how I talked about how if you let yourself do the things you need to do to fix the things you need to fix to get to where you want to be. Your unconscious mind won't let you do that if it doesn't think you're supposed to be there. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot harder to do those sorts of things whenever you don't, your unconscious mind is trying to undermine you along the way, right? I, I like to take a brute force approach to uh, sub- limiting beliefs and subconscious beliefs. When I know I need to do something and I feel the resistance, I just say, shut the fuck up and do it. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing is your unconscious mind gets first vote. Yeah, but... so you- and it And the thing is, it, it knows you better than you know yourself in so many ways and it will find subtle ways to fuck you up because the thing is that you can brute force your way to success and then what happens you blow it the fuck up for some chick that you're in the wrong relationship with couldn't you that was oh my god you just hit the fucking hammer right there um one of the girls that i dated was like you're so fucking forceful with everything you do like (laughs) i've just i that's just i barrel ahead (laughs) yeah Because that's, you've been, essentially, that's a way you've tried to brute force your way past your limiting beliefs. But the difficulty is that your mind says, okay, cool, I'll let you get there. And then I'll tear it around or tear it apart all around you. We can't, can't repeated, 
repeated experiences and repeated, uh, you know, the your life affirming your brute force can that can't that slowly rewrite the subconscious? No, because all it does is it proves that you can brute force your way to a place. It doesn't prove you deserve it. Huh. it doesn't prove that you're allowed to have it. it doesn't prove that it's actually going to give you the life that you want. So brute force will not rewrite it, even if you do it for like no. years. No, because you don't know the lessons your mind is taking from that. You don't get to decide what it interprets it and means, right? Okay. Remember how I said that our conscious mind is not the part of our mind that's actually deciding what the events in our life mean? Yeah. Yeah. The uh, I'll save this question for uh, when we do a podcast, but uh, mm -hmm. very interested to hear. The, you've, how many sessions have you done so far? How many clients have you had? A couple hundred. Close be, to 200 at this point. Be interesting to talk about the patterns that you see reoccurring in the majority of men out there and like what's the because i'm sure you see like a, at this point some yeah. common things that pop up that need to be rewritten definitely definitely there's definitely patterns every guy's unique everybody's messing themselves up in their own unique way for their own unique reason but there's there's themes i'll put it that way there's themes yeah definitely themes oh cool all right man well, hey man thank you ryan you're quite welcome you're quite welcome uh sit on this overnight see how you feel about uh putting this up online and we'll talk about it later on this week. If you got any questions, drop me an email. I'm always around. And other than that, I'll touch back with you in a week and see how you're doing, okay?